Hi guys, this is Dr. Salman Yazad. Uh, what I'm going to do today is to go over uh, some of the characteristics of the internal and external part of the spinal cord and also talk about the spinal nerves that are located here. Now, when you're looking at this structure, this is showing the uh, external part of the spinal cord, which is going to be extending right from the foramen magnum all the way down to the level of the L1, L2, where the spinal cord is going to be terminated, and after that are just going to be the nerve fibers that are extending there. Grossly looking at this structure, you can see that as the spine comes down in the neck area, it gets a slightly larger in this part. This is known as a cervical enlargement and then taper back down to smaller and ultimately gets bigger again, this section known as a lumbar enlargement. As you go down here, you will see that the spine, it is coned, tapered and finishes right in this section. This one is known as the conus medullaris part. And from there, this nerve that exits all the way down, this one is known as the phylum terminale. The fibers here that here located, since there is no spinal cord located, these are one the one that we call caga equina parts. You come a little bit higher here, you can see part of the sympathetic ganglion. You can see the cervical ganglion and also the thoracic ganglion that are sitting right all the way alongside this region. Some of the uh, important nerves that are uh, worthy of talking is going to be, first one is this nerve, this is a phrenic nerve, which is the branches of the C3, C4, and C5. That's the one that innervates your diaphragm, and of course your diaphragm is 75% of your breathing depends on that. That's why fracture of the nerve, neck usually uh, causes the problem of paralysis of the breathing. Then you can see the brachial plexus which are branches of the C4 all the way to T1 that produce several type of cords, and all cords are the one that produce several nerves that produce activity to your upper extremities. You come down here between each rib, we're gonna have the intercostal nerve that are sick, produce innervation to the tissue right alongside there. You come a little bit lower here, you get to some of the other neuronal structures that are located here. This is a subcostal nerve. From that one, you're going to get another one which is known as the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerve. Then you come here, this one is your lateral cutaneous femoral nerve, and this is going to be your femoral nerve. You come a little bit lower on that part, then you're going to get to the sciatic nerve that is here, and from there it's going to go all the way down. And of course, this is the dura mater that is sitting here that terminates right on that part. Now, looking at the transverse section part of the spinal cord, you can see it's going to be look like something like that. Of course, this is a body. Remember, this is anterior, this is posterior, and this is a representation of the cervical because the bifid spinous process that you can see here. Now, look at the spinal cord that are sitting here. You can see the white matter part located on the peripherally and the gray matter located right down the center. This is one of the characteristics that you can find within the spinal cord. Spinal cord, it is being encased itself by three layers of the connective tissue from the outside all the way to the inside, known as the first one is known as a dura matter. The second one underneath it here is known as an arachnoid, and the third one that is in contact with the spinal cord itself known as the pia matter. This space here known as the epidura, and this is the area where the injection is given, which causes numbing, especially during the OB, uh, when the woman is going to give pregnancy and trying to go into labor and parturition, injection in this part causing the numbness that happens. And as you look here, the injections are usually given at the level of the L2, L3, because on those areas there is no spinal cord. The spinal cord terminates at the level of the L1. So when the injection is given, make sure that there is no damage is going to be happening to actual spinal cord. Coming back here, now you can see that this is going to be my spinal nerve that comes 
as the spinal nerve passes through the transverse foramen and enter into the spine, it will divide. A branch of it is going to go to the back, and also there's a branch of it in front. Your spinal cord is a mixed nerve, means carrying both sensory and motor activity. The sensory in information reaches the spinal cord by way of the posterior nerve root. Within the posterior nerve root, you have this little bump here. This one is known as the ganglion, dorsal root ganglion that you can see. From there, information passes to the afferent neurons and comes here by, their, by way of these nerve rootlets. Find its way from the posterior part into the spinal cord. Connection is going to be happening at this section, which is known as a posterior gray horn. From there, information is going to be converted from the motor into the, I'm sorry, from the sensory to the motor by the interneuron here, and by way of the anterior gray horn, things or information is going to come up to the rootless, motor rootless, from there to the motor root, and from there to the neuron and outside of the body. The two sides here kind of mirror image of one another because there is a line here which is known as the medium anterior fissure and this one known as the medium posterior sulcus. These two sections are connected to each other by this dark line which is known as the gray commensur. Right down the center, you have the central canal where the cerebral spinal fluid is going to be circulating. Beside the posterior gray horn and anterior gray horn, remember, posterior gray horn receive the sensory information, anterior gray horn send the motor information out. There's also lateral gray horns on either side. Those are the ones involved in autonomic nervous system. Then we're going to get to the white matter. The white matter are a group of the funiculi that extend, produce ascending and descending track alongside of the spine, which everything is going to be connected to the brain by the ascending track, and everything from brain comes down to the spine by way of the descending track. It's composed of the anterior white column, posterior white column, and lateral white column, and attached by the median commensurate or white commensurate right down the center here. To better a little bit more visualize this one better, we can look at them on this one here. This one's a little bit more simplified for you to be able to look at. Again, you can see the spinal cord, which is a spinal nerve, I'm sorry, that it comes right here. It divides, goes to the posterior by way of the posterior root ganglion, and through the nerve rootlets goes to the posterior gray horn. From posterior gray horn, sensory information converted to the motor information, and by way of the anterior gray horn, the motor activity will come down and get to the area that was originated. Also, you can see the lateral gray horn, and right down the center here, which is the median gray commensal there. Then here, posterior white matter, anterior white column, and also lateral white column that you can see here, and right down the center here, you can see the central canal. And I hope that you find this thing to be helpful for you, and thank you for watching.